What's up everybody, it is Dan Cam, you know, and I am back with another video. And what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna go over all of the modifications that I have done to my Omen, both physically and through software that I have. And it's been a couple months since I've done one of these, but my Omen's kind of changed quite a bit since then, so I wanted to do an updated one. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get into it. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the physical modifications for my Omen 25L. And the first one is going to be my air cooler, which is a Noctua Chromax U9S. And normally it comes with one 92 millimeter fan, but I went ahead and I added another one onto the other side and it is set up in a push pull configuration. So basically this fan is pushing through the cooler and then this fan is pulling air away into my rear fan, which is a 92 millimeter. And that's set up as an exhaust to push air out of the case. And then I also have my top 120 millimeter fan, which is also a Noctua Chromax fan. And by the way, I'll go ahead and link everything mentioned in this video down below. And my top 120 millimeter fan is set up as an exhaust. And the rear fan and top fan are both Y split into my system fan header with a Y cable. And then my two 92 millimeter fans on the air cooler are Y split into the CPU LC fan header. And I do have a front fan and it is the slim 92 millimeter. And I kind of wish I would have gone with the normal width one, but this one's actually doing its job, so I don't mind. And it is actually double-sided tape with Gorilla Tape. And it actually doesn't move and doesn't cause any noise. And it's been great in that position. And that is set up as an intake. So basically this fan's pushing air through here and then through the cooler and then out both the rear and through the top. And then you'll notice that my top hard drive bin is empty. And I kind of did this to let air kind of accumulate in here and then blow through the front fan. And I don't know how effective this is, but I thought it looked kind of cool. So I just ended up relocating my hard drive to the bottom slot. And then I do have two fans on the bottom. And this one is a 120 millimeter and it's actually being wedged in between the power supply and then let's see if I can get this on camera and between that bracket and it doesn't move doesn't cause any noise so I just leave it as is and then this is a 92 millimeter fan and that's actually just sitting in place right there and it doesn't really fit that well you can see it's kind of tilted but it's keeping my PC cool so I just leave it as is and those are both set as intake because you can see there is a gap between the bottom to let air into the case and then heat rises so you want the air to come upward and then out through the top but my graphics card takes up so much room at the the bottom of the case that these fans mainly are for the gpu and the way these are hooked up these three fans, my front fan and two bottom fans, are actually not hooked up to the motherboard. They are solely being powered by this controller right here. And this is a Noctua fan controller. And basically with this knob, I can adjust the fan speed manually. So it will not be controlled by the motherboard or Omen Command Center, but I can manually control these. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this on video, but right now it's at 12 o'clock. Let's turn it up to three o'clock and you can hear how my fans are spinning pretty fast now. So I can adjust it based off certain situations like rendering videos, but normally I keep it about halfway. And so far this has been a great $20 investment. So let's put this back at half and you can see the fans settle down. And that does it as far as fans for the case. Now the 
Next modification I made, if you watched my last video, I went ahead and upgraded the RAM from 16 gigabytes up to 32 gigabytes. And it is G-Skill Ripjaws RAM. And it's rated at 3200 megahertz. And unfortunately, the HP motherboard defaulted it down to 2133. But I went ahead and um, bumped the speed up with Ryzen Master back up to 3200. So now I have 32 gigabytes of RAM. And then I do have this cool little Noctua sticker that I placed on the front of my cooler. Because Noctua fans are normally brown. So I actually thought it looked kind of cool in here, so I just left it. And then, yeah, I think that does it for modifications to the... Uh, to my Omen case, all of the physical modifications. So let's take a look at the programs I use and the adjustments that I have made. And we're now taking a look at my desktop and you can see I have a lot of programs open right now, but I'll go over each and every one of them to show you what I do for my Omen. So in your Omen command center, AKA your Omen gaming hub, under your fan control, I always leave my fans on turbo and it may result in a little bit more noise, but I would rather keep my system cooler. So I leave my fans on turbo and that's actually all I do within the Omen command center besides, you know, change all my lighting. Um, but like I was saying, I normally always keep mine just on white. All right. So that's going to do it for Omen command center. And then next, let's move on to uh, let's move on to Ryzen Master. Um, so unfortunately, this is only for AMD processors, but there are Intel equivalents um, where you can read temperatures in real time. And then if you go over to um, Omen Command Center, this is more of an average your temperature, but this temperature showing right here is my real time temperature. Um, and in here, if you saw my RAM install video, and I'll go ahead and link that up at the top right, I uh, adjusted my memory speed after installing my G-Skill RAM because it should have ran at 3200 megahertz, but it came defaulted to 2133. So I used Ryzen Master to bump that up, and I'll link that so you can see how I accomplished that. And then under my profile one, um, another change that I have made is I did a slight undervolt to my CPU. So the peak core voltage you see right here is set at 1.25 and from the factory, it is set at 1.33125. So I have set mine to 1.25 and, um, my core frequency is the 3700Xs are at 3.6 gigahertz. So I actually bumped this up to 4100, AKA 4.1 gigahertz. And so it gives me a slight under voltage with a boost in core frequency. So I actually see a little bit less temperature and a slight FPS boost, but just be careful when you're adjusting settings like these, um, Anytime you do any of these, make sure you click apply and test and it will run a stress test. And just to show you what my stress test looks like with all of the mods I have now, let's go ahead and do it. So it's running a stress test. And then right now you can see my CPU staying at around 60 to 62 Celsius. And you can see it's peak speeds, 4,100 megahertz. And it's going through all its tests and you can see each core is around 4.1 gigahertz in there. So you can hear my fan starting to ramp up a little bit. All right. So it finished profile one, apply and stress test success. So that went through successfully. And if Ryzen master doesn't like the changes you have made, it'll actually default to before. And sometimes it will restart your computer. So don't panic if you've gone too far, but just make very small adjustments. Maybe start with 1.3 volts and then bump this up from 3,600 to 37. And unfortunately this is only for AMD users. So that's all I do within Ryzen master. And the next one, let's go into uh, MSI afterburner. So this is going to be for um, on-screen displays, as you can see right here 
in my Radeon software. You can set these up through MSI Afterburner and Riva Tuner Statistics Server. But under Settings here, we're going to click this cog. And then under Fan, I have an, um, a custom fan curve for the blower fan that is on my GPU. Because for some reason, it's set really low from the factory. So this is what my fan curve looks like. So it's a little bit more aggressive than stock, but it keeps my graphics card cooler. And this is just for my card, which is the RX 5700. So a lot of Omens come with the 2060s and 2070s, the shorter cards. So you'll just have to experiment with what works best. But just to give you an idea of what you're looking at. So you can see this side right here is the fan speed. So when my graphics card gets up to 50 degrees Celsius, the fan will be spinning at 30. And when my uh, graphics card gets to, gets excuse me gets up to 60 degrees Celsius, it'll run at let's see what do I have it at 40 percent, and that's usually kind of where it stays at. And then if it gets really hot, which it never does, I it ramps up very high, um, so I can get it to cool back down. But I've never seen it go over. 65 ish 66 67 in that range um, this fan curve keeps my gpu really cool and once again it will increase the fan noise a little bit but once again i would rather have cooler temperatures and then as far as on-screen display ooh, it's, actually it's under monitoring these are the ones that i have included in my um, vital display for games so this will show up in games right here. So I have my GPU temperature you can see right here, CPU, my fan speed, 27%, and then frame rate, which is jumping all over the place, but it's we're just at my desktop, so that doesn't matter. And then I also look at memory usage. Um, and those are the only five I really care to see. Um, and that's actually all I do within the settings for Afterburner. You can undervolt through this program, but I don't really feel the need to. My temperatures don't really get high enough that I need to undervolt, but you can, and there are lots of tutorials on how to do that on YouTube, so I'm not gonna get into that. But that's it as far as MSI Afterburner. And basically with Riva Tuner Statistics, this is the program that actually puts the numbers that you're seeing in the program. And then pretty much the only one you need to look at is the on the screen display zoom. And then you can bump this up. And so you can make it huge if you want, or you can make it small. And I actually keep mine at the smallest setting. I know you guys probably cannot read this looking at this video, but I can barely see it. And I don't worry about looking at my temperatures too much, but I always like to have the option to look at them. So I just keep it on the smallest setting and it's always at the top left. Um, so that does it as far as MSI Afterburner and Riva Tuner. And then the last thing I use is going to be, this is for uh, AMD graphics cards, but under your global graphics settings, I keep my um, profile on eSports and that's actually all I change. I don't mess with any of these settings down here. There are a couple videos that show um, changing a few of these and I've tried it and it, it kind of helps, um, but I just leave it on eSports and I've had good luck and I haven't had any issues with frame rate or anything like that. Seems to be pretty consistent. But other than that, I think that is all of the programs I use. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think, excuse me, I'm leaving anything out. Um, so that's gonna do it for programs that I use. Well, that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was informative. And like always, if you have any questions or concerns to please comment down below, but my computer is running absolutely fantastic and I'm seeing idle temperatures from 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. And then while in game, I'm seeing anywhere from 50 up to 60. And then even while streaming with a lot of programs open, I'm seeing up to about 65 Celsius, but it usually is steady at around 60 to 62, about the same as what my stress test was that I just showed you within Ryzen Master. And yeah, even while rendering, I'm seeing temperatures of about 
67 to 7 degrees Celsius, which is probably the most CPU intensive thing that you can do. So the computer is running great. All the modifications have been great and it, I'm not really looking into any other mods as of right now, but I'm kind of looking into graphics cards a little bit just with all the hype over all the new ones, but finding one's impossible. So I'm just going to wait until all the demand dies down a little bit, probably what early to mid next year. So we'll see what happens then. And uh, I just want to say thank you guys for all your support recently. Um, I'm at just over 1,300 subscribers, and I think it was two weeks ago I came out with my um, announcement for my 1,000 subscribers special, and I think I was at 950. So within two weeks, I've gained uh, up to 350 subscribers, which is just absolutely insane to think about. And it's just so awesome watching this channel grow and so many people switching to omens and getting into PCs from consoles. So I'm just so excited that I can help everyone either make the, their decision to purchase an Omen or modify it and just know more about it. So it's been, it's been really great to go through this, um, this whole YouTube journey and meet all you guys and answer all your questions. And I'm just really excited for making more videos and all that. So I just want to say thank you guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and like if you enjoyed it and please subscribe if you are new. And I hope you guys have a great day and I will see y'all in the next video.